Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is part of a series on the global economy. In my last video, I gave an overview of the impacts of protection in general. Today, I'll be focusing on the impacts of specific methods of protection. Along with this, I'll be using protection diagrams and showing you how to interpret them. Because of the diagrams and maths involved, some of the concepts involved in this video are considered some of the more complex topics in the whole course. And just like in maths, expertise of this topic will come with practice and repetition. All right, let's get started with a recap. Protectionist strategies are government policies aimed at giving an artificial advantage to domestic industries over foreign competition. The reasons for protectionist policies were covered in my last video, so you can check that out for more detail. The specific methods of protection that we're gonna to cover today are tariffs, quotas, subsidies, export incentives, and local content rules. Let's start by looking at a market diagram. We'll first see how it's impacted by free trade and then by tariffs. In this market diagram, we're looking at demand from Australian consumers and supply from domestic producers in Australia. If we start allowing foreign competition, such as from China, what would likely happen is that they can offer prices lower than our domestic equilibrium price. We'll call this the world price, shown as PW. With this lower price, Australian consumers expand their demand, but Australian producers contract their supply. As a result, domestic producers have lost revenue. Domestic producer revenue is shown by the area in this rectangle created at the supply curve. It's calculated as domestic quantity supplied times the price received. As you can see, as foreign competition caused the supply to contract, the rectangle has shrunk, and domestic producers have lost revenue. This gap between domestic demand and supply is satisfied by imports. Remember this tip. This gap is the amount of imports, and this box is how much revenue foreign producers are making from Australia. Protection aims to narrow this import gap so that domestic suppliers can have a larger market share and keep more revenue. Tariffs are one of the ways to achieve this. Tariffs are a tax on imports, therefore increasing their price to consumers in this market. In effect, it's raising the price of imports, or the world price. By doing so, the import gap is narrowed in the diagram. Foreign producers lose market share and revenue, as seen by the shrinking of this box. Domestic producers get to expand the supply, and as seen by this box, get increased revenue. This could then lead to increased domestic employment. That's good news, but for consumers, higher prices lead to less consumer choice, as seen by the contraction in demand here. Overall, this leads to lower standards of living, not to mention the loss of efficiency, competitiveness, and other general economic effects that I covered in my last video. One more specific stakeholder to look at is the government. Because tariffs are taxed on imports, they can receive revenue from imports. This is calculated by multiplying the amount of imports by the size of the tariff, and it's shown by this box here. Furthermore, by boosting the market share and revenue of domestic producers, the government could receive more company tax. Increased domestic employment would also mean greater incomes and consumption, leading to greater income tax and GST receipts. This wouldn't be seen in the market diagram. Next, let's look at quotas. Quotas are limits on the amount of imports. By restricting the supply of imports, the price of imports will again increase. The effects are identical to those of tariffs, so the diagrams look very similar. The world price is raised, the imports are reduced, domestic producers expand the supply and increase revenue, leading to increased domestic employment. One important difference though, is that there is no tariff revenue for the government. The foreign producer gets to pocket the full price increase. Having said that, the government can still gain tax revenue from income tax, company tax, and GST receipts. But again, this is not shown in the market diagram. One more diagram to look at is the subsidy diagram. A subsidy is financial assistance from the government to lower the production cost per unit for the domestic producer. Do you know how subsidies impact the market diagram? It shifts the supply curve to the right, as producers can offer a greater quantity at a lower price. Shifting the domestic supply curve to the right makes the import gap smaller, meaning that domestic producers get to increase the market share over foreign competitors. The changes in revenue can also be seen in this diagram. As you can see, foreign producers decrease in revenue, while domestic producers increase theirs. How about the impact on the government budget? First, here's a quick tip. To figure out the size of the subsidy, look for the vertical distance between the supply curves. Why? Because you're trying to see how many dollars the supply curve has been lowered as a result of the subsidy. With this, you can calculate how much the government is spending in total on the subsidy. The total expenditure on the subsidy is the domestic quantity supplied times the size of the subsidy, shown by this box. And this illustrates the impact of a subsidy on the government budget. The required government expenditure, which is in turn funded by the taxpayer. This fiscal resource could have been spent elsewhere or given back to taxpayers to choose how to spend it. So just like with the other protectionist strategies, this represents a loss of allocative efficiency. A couple more methods of protection that we must study are local content rules and export incentives. There are no diagrams involved, but let's check out the definitions and their impacts. 
Local content rules are when the government requires goods to be made with a specified percentage of domestic inputs. This minimizes the amount of import spending and generates income for the domestic economy. One example is the production of submarines. Even though they're produced by a foreign contractor, they must include a certain percentage of Australian steel and hire an Australian workforce. TV and radio broadcasters are another example. A specified amount of the broadcasting time must feature Australian shows and songs, which provides employment and incomes for Australian producers and artists. Export incentives include assistance to local producers in the form of grants, loans, or technical assistance. These policies focus on expanding into foreign markets rather than restricting imports. An Australian example is the Export Market Development Grant, or EMDG, that provides financial and general assistance to Australian businesses. There's one more method of protection that's not in this part of the syllabus, but you might read about it in the news. I'm talking about devaluing the currency. You can learn more about this by watching my video on government intervention on the exchange rate. So in this video, I've explored a few methods of protection. I've looked at the impacts on individuals, domestic and foreign firms, and the government budget. Protection also has general impacts on the domestic and global economy. I recommend that you watch my last two videos to get a full picture of the impacts of protection. And like I mentioned at the beginning, mastery of this topic will come with practice and repetition. Make sure you do lots of exercises. You can also reach out to me via the email address in the description below, as well as through our Facebook page if you want to organize a consultation with me. And while you're at our Facebook page, why don't you chuck us a follow? Also, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video too. And I look forward to continuing to make HSA economics easy for you. See you next time.